America, and welcome to the program, uh, Founders Fridays. Last week, I, um, I kind of wondered if I, I expressed the idea that I didn't know when we started these if anybody would watch. Um, last Friday was such a remarkable show. We restored the um, black founders, the African Americans that you didn't even know about. Uh, just before we started the program, they whispered in my ear that. Uh, we were number one in all of cable news last Friday. There is a great hunger for the truth in America and the restoration of that truth. Wherever the chips fall, just tell us the truth. It explains so much. When you start to restore history and put it in its rightful place, you, you begin to see how we got here. And it's kind of, I mean, was anybody else, anybody else watch this last Friday? And were you kind of upset that you were like, what the hell? How did this even happen to us? Um, okay, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about my second favorite founder, Benjamin Franklin. I didn't know much about this guy. I mean, everybody knew that he flew a kite, right? And that's what all of our kids, <laughs> oh yeah, he went out, flew a kite, and he invited a lightning rod. You might have known that he was uh, an ambassador, right? Um, did you know he was a spy? I didn't know he was a spy. Um, he's the guy with the militia. He did the first political cartoon in America. Did you know that? I mean, this guy was truly, truly amazing. So tonight we're going to learn about Ben Franklin. If Ben Franklin were a politician, um, <laughs> they'd kill him today. <laughs> he would be the poster child. Anybody who thinks that I'm a hate-mongering conservative, oh, you haven't met him yet. There's no way Ben Franklin could ever run for office and win. This guy was um, loved all around the world. He could have run in France and won. I don't know about England. For a while there, maybe, but then they were afraid of him because he was amazingly powerful and wildly smart. Imagine for a moment what would happen to a politician, especially a conservative, if he said this about the poor and poverty, look at this. I think the best way of doing good to the poor is not making them easy in poverty, but leading or driving them out of it. In my youth, I traveled much. I observed in different countries that the more public provisions were made for the poor, the less they provided for themselves and, of course, became poorer. And on the contrary, the less that was done for them, the more they did for themselves and they became richer. That only makes sense. The more you do uh, for somebody else, the less they're going to do for themselves. Media matter, you know, um, geeks dream of quotes like this from, uh, from a politician. They're just like, oh, please say something about the poor and how you want to make them uncomfortable. But it's true. Today, all it takes to be labeled a hate monger is proposing a smaller budget, which is still an increase smaller than the increase from the other guy. You're a hate monger. Yet here is Ben Franklin advocating that doing less for the poor is better. Even if you agree, that probably sounds radical, but it, it wasn't. Uh, we're bombarded with the messages that generosity is expanding government. That's where true charity comes from, Exp extending welfare, raising the minimum wage, giving away free internet. Here's some concert tickets. I mean, what else do we have to give people? But Franklin's ideas were not, at least most of them, were not radical. Um, they were common sense. Some of them, some of them were radical. I mean, the cure for us today is to have just a little bit of the common sense and what would seem radical. No politician would say something like, make the poor uncomfortable. But he's right. Big government never lifts anybody out of poverty. It creates slaves, people who are dependent on the scraps from the government. The handouts. Uncle Sam can't lift you out of poverty. That's up to you to do. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Uncle Sam is wearing striped pants for a reason. The guy should be in prison. <laughs> I have met a lot of successful people. I know a guy who's a billionaire. Um, he grew up in a house with cardboard walls. Um, he went on to invent the egg carton. He's a billionaire today. I've never met anybody who's successful that told me, you know, if it wasn't for those handouts from the government, well, I would have never made it. 
I've never met one. Have you? Ben Franklin observed things. Uh, he watched and, and experienced life. And yet, somehow or another, the lessons that he has have been virtually erased, as has he. I mean, really, it's all about the Benjamins. That's all you think about with Benjamin Franklin, the kite, and he's on the money. But there's a lot missing in what's taught about our founders like Franklin. Did you know that Ben Franklin, who hated the poor so much, he created the nation's first hospital. Pennsylvania Assembly didn't want to do it. The idea was about to die, and Franklin said, okay, wait, wait a minute, we got to have a hospital. He issued a challenge. He said, how about if I raise half the money? If I can raise 2,000 pounds from private citizens, this was an impossible feat at the time, you have to raise the other, and you match the funds. The assembly, think of that they just hit the lottery because this guy's never going to be able to do it. Nobody is, nobody is going to say, oh, yeah, let me give money to build a hospital, you know, because people are hate mongers. They took him up on that, and uh, he did it. That hospital is still operating today. Franklin got more than 2,000 pounds, and the bill was signed into law May 11, 1751, to create a hospital, as Franklin put it, to care for the sick, the poor, and the insane who are wandering the streets of Philadelphia. Oh, what a hate monger he is. Franklin also is lumped in with the other founders that were racists. That's all you ever hear. How many times have you heard that all of our founders are just nothing but white guys, rich white guys, and they're all racist? Ben Franklin couldn't be further from a racist. I mean, he was so good at being a racist. He was the head of the, uh, the abolitionists, the Abolition Society, a group demanding an end to slavery. That's how good and insidious he was. Classrooms don't teach that he was an abolitionist. Nope, nope, he was just a, he was a white racist. I think... I mean, I just, I was in, I don't remember what city, and I saw elementary school with... Um, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson Elementary School. I about stopped the car and just read them the riot act. Fifty-one public schools are named after Woodrow Wilson. Should be zero. If you compare the two, Woodrow Wilson was the president who brought Jim Crow to Washington. He not only segregated the army, but Woodrow Wilson's the guy who segregated bathrooms, cafeterias, work areas. He justified this, um, and he said, you know, the white government workers, we got to segregate because, you know, you can catch diseases from blacks. That's Woodrow Wilson. And yet we're still building schools named after Woodrow Wilson, the progressive. The president of Princeton turned black applicants away because he thought that their desire for education was unwarranted. Tonight, we're going to give you a look at Benjamin Franklin you were never taught about in school. Was he perfect? No. No, he wasn't. I want to know from our guest if he actually sat in the window naked. Do you guys know? Did he sit in? He did? Don't look directly at it. Woof. <laughs> Franklin proved that a private citizen could indeed effect change. Besides the hospital, he also started the first library, the Lending Library. That was his idea. After a uh, massive fire ravaged the city of Philadelphia in 1730, he helped establish the first volunteer fire company in America. When the government refused to act against the threat from the French and Indian Wars, he printed the plain truth and went door to door organizing the first militia in America. In short order, he had 10,000 members in his militia. <gasps> He's a hate monger. They nominated him, nominated him to be a colonel. But he declined. Benjamin Franklin, he defined Americanism. He did. He was, I don't even know, Bill Gates and uh, uh, Steve Jobs and uh, who's the, the, the really smart guy, black holes and baby universes, Stephen Hawking, all rolled up into one. Innovation, personal responsibility, self-improvement, pull yourself up. Rooted in common sense. If this man were alive today, boy, he'd be pissed off at us. He'd be the grumpiest of grumpy old men, and with good reason, because we're not using common sense. Today we restore the history of one of the greatest Americans.